Martin Heidegger, the German philosopher, has contributed significantly to contemporary debates about technology and industrialization by critically examining the Enlightenment. Heidegger's critique of the Enlightenment is rooted in his conception of technology and its relationship with human existence. According to Heidegger, technology is not merely a tool or a means to an end, but a way of comprehending and controlling the world. This way of thinking, which he calls inframing, is based on the belief that the world is a resource to be used and transformed for human purposes. As a result, everything is reduced to its instrumental value, concealing its deeper significance and meaning. Heidegger considers the Enlightenment a crucial moment in the history of inframing, as it endorses rationality and reason as the primary means of comprehending and governing the world. He argues that the emphasis on rationality and progress paved the way for the development of modern technology and industrialization, which entrenched the inframing mode of thinking even further. In particular, industrialization created a society increasingly dominated by machines and tools that saw nature and human beings as nothing more than resources to be exploited. Heidegger's critique of the Enlightenment's emphasis on reason and progress should not be viewed as an outright rejection of these values, as the philosopher himself reasserted later in life. Instead, it is a call for a more nuanced understanding of their role in human existence. Reason and progress should not be seen as ends in themselves, as many pseudo-intellectuals in academia seem to reassert, but as a means of discovering the deeper meaning and purpose of existence. To achieve this, a fundamental shift in thinking is necessary, from the inframing mode of thinking to a more reflective and contemplative approach. In the contemporary context, the aforementioned reflective method has been pushed towards an extreme end, however. Many significant individuals in academia are beyond guilty of engaging in pseudo-intellectualism, where they prioritize sounding intelligent and well-informed over genuine understanding and action. These individuals may enjoy participating in intellectual discussions and debates on various topics, but often fail to take concrete steps to improve their personal lives or the world around them. This behavior not only perpetuates a culture of inaction and complacency, as seen and reflected in nearly every aspect of contemporary modernity, but also undermines the purpose and value of genuine intellectual discourse. Even to the common man, it is self-evident that all individuals should prioritize applying their knowledge and ideas towards positive change, rather than simply using them as a means of self-aggrandizement. This understanding is primal and undeniable, and yet continually repressed by the civilization of our period. The negative consequences of modernity have led to the vilification of the term itself, as well as the establishment of powerful institutions in various areas of society that shape our perceptions of how we should live and exert control over us. The repressive nature of these institutions has fostered a culture of resistance to modernity, further entrenching the negative connotations associated with it. These institutions include educational institutions that promote standardized curricula and suppress individual creativity, economic institutions that prioritize profit over social welfare, and political institutions that perpetuate inequality and marginalization. The pervasive influence of these institutions reinforces the notion that modernity is a system to be resisted, rather than a force that can bring positive change to society. I hold intention behind my words. My firm, concrete stance espoused here is that the current state of modernity and postmodernity is untenable, and that urgent action is needed to transform our world into one that is characterized by renewal, healing, and unity. To this end, I call for a complete rejection of the degenerate aspects of postmodernity and a rethinking of the principles that underpin modernity. This includes a concerted effort to transition away from our primitive understanding of human needs and towards a more compassionate and holistic approach to reducing individual suffering and mending international differences. Moreover, it is my firm conviction that the envisaged transformation ought to be initiated by enterprising young men, sagacious mentors, and empathetic women who are prepared to defy the fetters that impede our progress. This entails a concerted undertaking to confront the prevalent power structures and establishments that engender disparity, and to establish fresh mechanisms that are grounded in the values of fairness, uniformity, and durability. I hold an unwavering conviction that through collective efforts aimed at dismantling the obsolete and constructing the novel, we can inaugurate an era of revitalization and convalescence, whereby humanity can replenish its vigor. This entails a need to embrace novelty, creativity, and receptiveness to new outlooks, while incessantly striving towards the objective of global reunification. Ideally, this pursuit will be facilitated through a restructured intergovernmental organization such as the United Nations, which will serve as a conduit for global collaboration and progress towards a sustainable future, but may happen under another name as the time will tell. The ideological striving for a unified future of intergovernmental collaboration, exploration of space, effective communication, and the dismantling of unjust societal structures requires a collective effort to build a new order based on principles of justice and sustainability. This movement, which should go under the name of pillarism for the pillars of ancient society, aims to bring about a fundamental transformation of the current order by hastily and decisively breaking down old power structures and replacing them with innovative and fresh systems. 
Pillarism is rooted in the belief that humanity can achieve a state of renewal and healing by embracing new ideas and perspectives, pursuing global reunification, and building a new foundation that upholds the pillars of society. These pillars include masculine values, the embrace of religion and purity, the increase in historical understanding, the end of authoritarian education, the end of unjust laws and discriminatory imprisonment, the end of economic and environmental exploitation, the building of statues, gardens, temples, and monuments, and effective communication among individuals. By coming together to dismantle the old and create the new, we can usher in the age of renewal, where humanity can rest and regain its strength and pave the way for a better tomorrow. Such are the aims of action theory, which I have dedicated my life to, and hope to convince you into doing the same. In the following passages, an effort for the examination of the deficiencies inherent in modernity will be undertaken, alongside the prospective avenues for their resolution and remedies to redress such insufficiencies.